Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I am going to show you how to make a leaf spring. And hopefully my audio sounds a bit better. I've been tweaking some things. And hopefully it sounds better than the last video I made. No, the last video I made was terrible audio. Anyways, so what you want to do first is you just want to have a blank um, scene and you're gonna make a box so you're gonna come over here to this little create tab with the Sun logo and then you're gonna come over to the geometry tab with the uh, sphere or ball logo standard perimeters and box so you're gonna make a box however size that you want it but we're gonna adjust it so you want it to be about about that width you know it doesn't need to be super thin but it also doesn't need to be super thick either and the height you want the height to be the height of one leaf so I'm gonna make my height about about like that this is gonna be one leaf in our leaf spring uh, I'm gonna bring the width down a little bit it's about right there maybe bring the length down a little bit anyways so that is about our leaf spring size that we want to use for one leaf and uh, now what I recommend that you do is center it so go to the move tool by right clicking and uh, you can right click on the arrows down here to move your box into the middle and uh, what we need to do is add segments in it. So segments are going to be what allows the box here that we have to bend. So you don't want to put a lot of segments because that can uh, ruin the spring and it can make it hard to, uh, to skin later and make it easier to use. So I'm going to add about 20 to 22, let's see here, we want 11 on each side. So we want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So that's one too many on this side. So we're going to bring it down by two and count them again to make sure. One, two, no, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is how many that you want. You want 21 segments in your box. Um, this is going to make it a lot easier to skin later because you're going to have to do these two segments at zero, then these two at one, then these two at two, and so on until ten. All right. Uh, so now what we want to do is make the rest of our leaves. So I'm going to zoom in here at the proper angle and it can help to have orthographic mode on. Orthographic mode uh, makes it easier to line up uh, objects, you know, perfectly. So I like going to orthographic mode and when you switch back to perspective mode, it may still look like orthographic. So then you select Z on your keyboard and it will go back to a normal uh, perspective view. 
So we're going to copy this leaf right here um, five times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in really far in so I can see what I'm doing. And what we're going to do is hold shift on your keyboard and drag the box down and line it up perfectly so that it's pretty much parallel or touching the other box. So there you're going to let go of click and then let go of shift and here you have a clone window and you can select the number of copies to make. We want five total springs uh, so we want four copies and make sure that you have copy selected instead of instance and click OK. So there you go now you have five leaves and they're spaced out evenly and whatnot. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to take the second leaf down. The top leaf is going to be the main leaf that goes across uh, from leaf eye to leaf eye. And the second leaf is going to be a leaf attached in the middle. And we are going to turn on edged faces and you want to line this leaf, this second leaf down with the uh, fourth line over. So one line, two line, three line, fourth line. You want to line up the first line with the fourth line of the top leaf. And you may not get it right, and you may have to do some fine adjustments. So that's what we're going to have to do here. So we just take the length, and we can put in a few different values to try and get it to line up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, see, mine's off by a little bit, but it doesn't have to be perfect, so it doesn't matter too terribly much. And then you need to turn the segments down until the segments on the second leaf line up exactly with the segments on the top leaf, or the leaf above it. So we're going to turn down the segments. And there you go. So the first leaf is going to have 21 segments. And the second leaf is going to have 15 segments. Then you want to do the same thing, except this time you're going to line it up with the third line, because there's an odd number of segments. Um, we're going to skip four segments on the first on the second leaf we're lining up with the first leaf and then on the third one we're only going to skip three and we'll have to find adjust it and that looks pretty decently even. And you might have to move your view around for the segments to refresh. So you can just zoom in and out real quick and the segments will refresh. Uh, so that one is all lined up. So your third one is going to have 11 segments. And if it looks like that, you should be good. And for the fourth one, we're going to do the same thing as the third one. We're going to only skip three segments. One, two, three, right there. And 
and line it up as best we can. That looks pretty good to me. So your fourth one is going to have seven segments. And that looks pretty good to me. And now the last one here, the fifth one. That looks pretty good to me. Now we're going to drop down the segments. And this one is going to have three segments. Is that right? Yep, looks right. All right, so there you go. As you can see, the leaf spring is taking its shape. And now the thing that we want to do is attach it together and optimize it. So what I like to do, and this is just to get the poly count down, because there's going to be four of these leaves. So if the leaves combined are about 500 polys. 500 times 4 is 2,000. So then these are going to be 2,000 poly leaf springs. And if you can make the poly count less, uh, you definitely should on anything that you do for spin tires or really any game. This is going to make the game perform better for uh, those less fortunate with. Um, you know, for instance, a laptop that doesn't have a lot of power or anything like that. You know, it's good. It's just going to make it a lot better for people like that. Uh, and then people will use your mod more. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all five of these and we're going to convert them to edible polys by right clicking coming down the drop menu go to convert to and go to edible poly and now all of these are edible polys we can edit them delete the polys and vertexes and whatnot so what I like to do is I like to go to the bottom view and I like to select go to uh, the select tool instead of the move tool and I just like to select all of these polys that are going to be covered by the other leaf springs and then we'll have to go to the side view and deselect those on top So as you can see there, I have selected the polys that are not going to be seen because the uh, polys on the other leaves will be covering it up. So polys that are not going to be seen that are taking up space for your CPU, RAM, GPU, that's obviously performance loss that really doesn't need to be lost because you're not seeing it anyway. So we're going to isolate this one leaf and we're going to 
delete, hit the delete button on your keyboard to delete those uh, segments there. And that is all the segments that, or all the polys that we need to delete on the top leaf. But see, now, all of these five objects, they were like, what, 470? Now it's 223. That is a lot less polys to worry about. So now we're going to do that with the other leaves. Ah, going to end the isolation there. So for the second leaf, you're going to delete all of the polys on top because those will not be seen. And you're just going to delete the polys that are going to be covered up by the other leaves on the bottom. So I'm just going to hit Control A after selecting the polygon, of course, to select all of the polys. And then I'm going to deselect that portion and that portion because those polys will be seen. And then we're also going to deselect the polys in the middle. And if you don't know how to deselect, you just hold Alt on your keyboard and select a portion or one single poly, and it will deselect it. And to select another poly, you can just hit control and that will select another poly. Control and click, of course. Anyways, then you're going to delete those and that's done on that <sighs> on that um, thing. Anyways, we're going to do this for the rest of them. So just follow what I do. And delete those. And I actually haven't done a leaf spring in a while, so <laughs> what you're seeing here is pretty good for me to just do this by memory after not doing it for a while. And I forget to delete these up here. And did I forget on this one? Doesn't look like it. Alright, and on the bottom one, you're just going to delete all the ones on top. Because you're going to be seeing the bottom ones, for the most part. Alright, so now, if we select it, look at that. It was 200 and something polys, now it's 166 polys which is a bit less and we're going to even optimize it we're going to optimize it even more later to make it a really low poly leaf spring but still look just as good as what we had before which was a high poly leaf spring anyways so now what we need to do is uh, weld the edges of these leaf springs together so that there aren't any gaps on the leaf spring at all. So what you can do is for instance on this bottom one you can just double click one of the edges on the top and it will select all of them and if it doesn't you'll just have to manually do it we'll manually do it for this uh, second one here. Now you're just going to select them and leave it be for now. So we're going to select all of the edges by hitting control A after selecting the edge tool and then you're going to alt you're going to deselect alt clicking the edges that were not cut off that the polygons were not cut from and I think that looks good. And 
And don't worry, we'll have our leaves spring by the end. In fact, you could have just quit earlier before we started optimizing it. You don't have to optimize it, but if you want to, it's a good thing to do. And it's especially a good thing to do on objects that are either high poly when they don't need to be or objects that you're going to put around the vehicle like leaf springs you're going to put them around the vehicle on at all four tires you're going to put leaf spring or a regular spring hopefully i'll be able to make a regular spring uh, video later so on the top one you don't need to select any of the edges on top so i'm just going to deselect the edges on the sides and then deselect the edges on the top and middle at the same time and there we go so you're probably wondering why did we have to select those edges and do nothing with them well here's why what we're now going to do is attach uh, all of these leaves uh, together to make one To make one object. So you're going to click this attach button down here under geometry and select all of these leaves and then you select the edge tool and look at that all of the edges that are going to be needing to be uh, welded together are selected which is going to make it easier so now going to click on the weld button just the uh, settings button for weld not actual weld and if you did click on weld you can hit control z on your keyboard to go back or the back arrow on he up here the undo button and as you can see it's gotten squirrely and it doesn't look good at all so there is a toggle right here, a toggle right here, that you can uh, decrease the amount of weld that it has, and then you can increase it again until it just barely welds together. So if you want to copy mine, I guess you can copy 0.04 but even that may not work on your leaf spring because it depends on how close the edges are to each other so it depends on the length width and height of your leaf spring so it may not work for you but you can copy 0 0.04 and it may work anyways i'm gonna hit the check mark after i've got it uh, to where it's not messed up but it welded all the edges and now you have a seamless leaf spring. You can take off the edge faces there. You have a seamless leaf spring. And it is 166 polys. So now what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to delete all of these segments here that are unnecessary. So you're going to select the edge tool again you're going to deselect everything by just clicking in a blank space and now you're going to select the edges in the middle of the leaves so you're not going to select these edges over here and you're not going to select the edges over here you're not going to select any of the border edges but for instance down here these edges are in the middle and are going horizontally and not vertically horizontally you're going to select all of these edges on the leaf spring So when you get done it should look just like that and 
and now you are going to hit backspace on your keyboard and that will get rid of those edges which will lower the poly count so if we again hit control a look at that we have 94 polys versus the what was it it was something like uh, 166 polys or something like that so we just lowered the poly count even more um, and those were useless polys. You didn't need those polys because you don't need multiple polys on a flat surface. If you have a flat surface, you only need one poly. Uh, but since this leaf spring will bend, we don't need to get rid of the vertical, um, the vertical edges. Even though it would lower the poly count, we don't need to get rid of those because those... Uh, are going to connect our object together. You can get rid of those if you want. So now you don't necessarily need to, but it's a it's going to clean your object up a little bit more and make it easier to skin if you delete all of the vertexes in the middle as well. And you don't want to delete the vertexes before you delete the uh, polys, I mean the edges, because if you delete the vertexes before the edges, it will delete the vertical edges as well. So once you get done with that, it should look like that. And hit backspace on your keyboard again to get rid of those vertexes. Now the vertexes won't um, increase your poly count themselves. Um, those will be the edges that will increase the poly count. So if you don't know what polys are, that right there, that square is a poly. And that square is a poly. And that square is poly and it takes more processing power and graphics power of your PC to process these uh, polys. So the more polys you have, the more your computer has to work in order to render them. So once you get that done, you want to check the other side, make sure it looks good, make sure you didn't delete any vertical uh, edges and there we go I mean that is a ton less polys than it was before it was 470 480 ish polys and now it is 94 polys now if you didn't know an editable poly will have a lower poly count than a editable mesh but to put your object in spin tires you need to convert it to an editable mesh not right now but later uh, actually that might be the next step uh, but anyways uh, now we have our 94 poly object but if we were to quickly just convert it to an edible mesh by collapsing it. Um, as you can see that poly count uh, a little over doubles and what it does it'll it'll take one poly and slice it into two polys just like that and even more polys apparently. <laughs> But yeah, for some reason, an edible mesh slices polys into more polys. I don't know why, I'm not going to pretend that I know why, but that's just the way it works, and you have to have your object as an edible mesh to put in spin tires, and if you don't, spin tires will automatically convert it to an edible mesh, so it won't make any difference where you have an edible poly or an edible mesh. 
but when you collapse it, it automatically converts it to an edible mesh. So you don't need to worry about that. And you do need to collapse it before you skin it. Uh, so yeah, we're going to convert this back to an edible poly. And the next thing that you need to do is have a bow, have a bowed spinder. Eh, a bowed leaf spring. <laughs> I don't know why I said splendor. That was weird. Uh, so you're going to click on this modifier list under the modifiers tab. And you're going to go down to uh, bend, which is right here. And it's a little funky with the direction stuff. So you can increase the angle, and as you can see, it bends a different way. But when I change it to a y axis, now it bends it the opposite direction that I want to, but that's the way that it should bend. Um, now you're going to direct the direction to the right angle. So we're going to do pretty sure 90 degrees and for us that's what it worked with the angle that the loose spring is at uh, for you it may be different but you'll just have to play around with that so as you can see now that we've got the direction figured out we can increase and decrease the angle to bend our leaf spring now if you put this under your truck right now and you'll have to to figure out the bend and length that you'll need but uh, if you put this under your truck right now uh, it may not be the length that, that you need so the first thing that you might think of is to go to the scale tool and scale it up but as you can see that changes every aspect of it after it's been bent and that's not what you want uh, so what you want to do is uh, come over here to this section and select edible poly as you can see the bend went away and now you can stretch it out in one direction not all directions the middle of this tool has all directions the side ha has two directions but if you click on one axis it'll do that so <laughs> Now I've got to reposition the object. There we go. And so now you can adjust the length of your leaf spring to get to your uh, leaf eyes and leaf mounts easier. Well, to get to them at all. Or it might be too long, so you can bring it in some. And go to the bend tool. But you don't want to scale it while it's in the bend tool uh, because it can make your leaf spring look funky. So just scale it after selecting edible poly and then you can go back to the bend. And it should look decent. That's probably too short of a leaf spring. Probably want it to be a little bit longer. Yeah, that looks better. But anyways, so that's how you make your leaf spring. And once you get it in the position that you want, so this part here is going to be touching your axle, and these two parts here are going to be on your leaf spring mount and leaf eyes that you've already positioned. You can rotate it if you want, yada yada yada. Once you've got all of that done, you can again convert it to an edible poly, and that will make it in this position forever. So it will be bent forever, and it will be in this position forever. Um, unless you, of course, hit the uh, back button. <laughs> um, so now what you want to do is... Uh, collapse it 
and now it's an edible mesh and it's collapsed in this position and you're not going to X form it what you're then going to do is unwrap it so find unwrap UVW it may be up here it may be way down here but it should be somewhere for you and you're going to click the polygon and the uh, I guess that's element tool rule there click those two buttons and click control A on your keyboard open UV editor mapping normal mapping you want these settings so box mapping normalize clusters click OK and now you've got UV mapped so the mud will show up right on your uh, part and you're not going to export it and you'll have to skin it and I'll have another video on skinning later and this was a long video but I hope that you guys enjoyed it and now you know how to make a leaf spring so hopefully you can get just a little bit closer to being able to export and put your vehicle into the game and I will see you guys in the next one.